Key Biscayne Stories collects the history of our beautiful island. This is your host, Alejandro Cervalli, and I am a certified key rat for many, many years and counting. With this podcast, we will share the stories of our residents and their love for this slice of paradise we call home. So stay tuned, relax, and enjoy these great Key Biscayne Stories. Today's guest are Mariana and Jorge, a Key Biscayne family who owns and operates the Golden Hog in the Key. You will often find them in the market working hard to provide a top quality experience. The Golden Hog is your neighborhood gourmet market featuring imported goods, artisanal cheeses and wines, a bakery, a juice bar, and more. They claim the best burger on the Key, so go and give it a try for yourself. At the Golden Hog, you are family. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. How's everything? How's, how's the whole COVID and the kids and back to school? Excellent. I mean, they're finally back to school. We'll see how long it lasts, but hopefully they'll stay there yeah. for a long time. We're looking back to go to normal. So tell me a little bit about Kiwi Skate. I, I know this is a family-owned business the golden hog and it's in the key key the keys are very beautiful place very loved by a lot of people what is what do you guys think what is your story um about kiwi skein what do you yeah. well i like to start saying that for me kiwi skein is a very special place i used to come here for vacation uh, when i was a little girl and i never dreamed that i would actually live here today and raise my kids here so i find it like a really an island paradise for me and when I first moved I, I thought I was living in a vacation and then I had to realize no 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 you're actually living here so you have to <laughs> you have to you know get to work and run a life here. Yeah Ki- Kiwi Skane for me it, it's an unbelievable place. You literally live in a resort style island that is only 15 to 20 minutes away of a big metropolis. I mean, that's very hard to find in, in the United States, you know, so we're really privileged. And for us that we have three kids, it's a fantastic opportunity that we're giving to them. We pretty much know many people in Kiwi Skin and being part of the Golden Hog, give that advantage to us, you know, that many people know us and we know many people and our kids the same way. They go around the key you feel safe, they they ride their bike and go to school and meet with their friends at the Village Green. So to me, I wouldn't think of any other place uh, to live better than what this team is. Has it been easy to build community and, and friendships in the key for you guys? It's been very easy, yes. Of course, our job makes us be very social, right? Because we meet many, many people every day. So we know a lot of people. I mean, we have a lot of friends. And, and through the school, also through the church, I think there is a lot of community out there. There's a lot of community building and community events that really makes it is easy, I think, to to feel and be part of, of this community. We're really blessed by the community we have here in Kiwi Skin. Again, there's, it's very difficult to replicate this in any other place. And there is such a blend of different cultures here that nobody feels a stranger. I think having lived in other places in the U.S. where we, you know, maybe have felt as a minority, I mean, here it's a pleasure to be blended with all these, well, mostly Latin American and Spanish-speaking people, but also with uh, also with the American community, I think it's, that is here in the key. That is here in the key. One event that we really love about Kiwi Skin is the Lighthouse Run, the 5K, and uh, we've been doing it as a family for the past. I think three years. And I think that is an event that our family in particular looks forward every year and we all participate. And, um, and, and we love that initiative. Beautiful. I didn't know we had that. <laughs> there really? you go. Look at that. Well, you see the, <laughs> the lighthouse there run is yeah. great. And it's been there for like what? Yeah, for a long, for long time. Like 30 years or something. Yeah. 
Awesome. Awesome. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, yourself, a little bit about your background, where you guys from, how did you guys get here? Okay. Um, we grew up in Venezuela, in Caracas, and in 2004, we came to the U.S. to pursue graduate school. We went to Penn State University, and then we've been relocated into several cities in the U.S. Jorge did an MBA in Penn State, and I did a Master in Community and Economic Development, and we then got jobs in Colorado, in Atlanta, Georgia, North in Carolina. Raleigh, North Carolina, and finally, finally here in Kibiske. Here in Kibiske. Wow. Wow, well, it's quite the traveling of the, around the United States there. That's yes. right. Well, it has been a great, a great adventure for us because, again, being from Venezuela and coming here and adapt to the culture and the country, you know, it's been really, really exciting and great part of our life. It has made a big impact in who we are right now. Going to all these states, has the food industry has always been the one that's been your main thing or have you done a little bit of everything? No, actually not. I mean, again, I, we came here to pursue a graduate degree. I was doing my master's degree and I work in, in technology, actually the opposite as a food business. So I was hired by a technology firm and they keep me, you know, for I worked for them for 10 years doing many things that I didn't like. And I realized that I, I was really enjoying eating well and, and having fun with food and, and try to cook myself. I mean, cooking, you know, at home. And that's how I got into the food business. Okay. And for how long have you guys been down here in South Florida in Key Biscayne? We have been here for five years already. We moved in 2015. It's been a, a nice story because Mariana didn't want to move to Florida. <laughs> she, thought that, she thought that Florida was not the right place to raise the kids. And I was insisting a lot to move to Florida because I, I had the golden hog and I had to manage remote, remotely. But, you know, I, I was able to convince her in 2015 and we moved in 2015 to Key Biscayne. So the golden hog, you're saying you had it before you moved down. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So how, tell us a little bit about the, the golden hog. You want to tell the story? Or it's like, yeah, you can tell it. You can tell it. So um, everything happened in 2000. I was dating Mariana and we came to Key Biscayne for a nice vacation with my father-in-law and my mother-in-law. It was kind of the first trip, you know, that allowed Mariana to travel with the boy. You know, <laughs> so one day we went to the former Kiwis Cane Farmers Market in Harvard Plaza. We went there to buy some groceries and I got in love with the place. I just said, you know, I was impressed with a variety of things and the, the quality of, of products they had. And when we were coming back to Key Colony to the apartment, I told Mariana, hey, Mariana, one day I'm going to buy or I'm going to have a business like this. You know, literally, you know, walking on this on Crandon Buller, I told her that. And and then we got married. We came to Penn State. We were in Atlanta, Georgia, already had two kids. And one day a friend of mine called me and said, Hey Jorge, I know you you work in Atlanta. I know you go a lot to Key Biscayne on vacation. I have a friend, I have a cousin who owns a business in Key Biscayne and they're not doing well. They need an advisor, a consultant. And when I asked what the business was, he told me it was a Kiwi Skin Farmer's Market. Boom. So story short, I ended up doing the consulting to him and I ended up buying the business because, you know, again, they were not doing well and they wanted to, to sell, sell out the business. So I ended up buying. And we couldn't believe the coincidence and the opportunity that was out there. And then on the other hand, Jorge's company was struggling a little bit and there were a lot of layoffs. So we said, well, this could be a perfect opportunity for opportunity. And, you know, if anything happens, we have that. Well, what happened was actually the opposite. You know, I, bought, I ended up buying the Golden Hog and then my, the business I used to work, they actually offered me relocation with a very good position to North Carolina. So I, it, this is 2009, 2010. 
in the middle of a crisis, right? So I ended up moving to North Carolina and owning a business in Key Biscayne and managing remotely a business from North Carolina. <laughs> so it has been very tough, you know, and hard, a lot of hard working and but good times. That's great. It's great that you were able to get the business that you kind of like dreamed about, you know, like that you would like to have. And then you were able to advise, maybe get a little bit of insight and then probably made a much better decision into making the purchase and being able to turn it around. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So what can we expect when we go to the Golden Hog? What, uh, what's like the, the ambience like? What's, what's the environment like? Okay, that's a great question. At the Golden Hog, we want to entice all your senses. We want you to get you engaged in your site when you get with amazing displays and bring you uh, products from that are unexpected and that are from around the world. And they are also related to the seasons that we have. Fall, summer, winter, Mother's Day, whatever it is that is going on. We, uh, we want you to surprise you every time that you go there. Either, and there's something for everybody. If you're a cheese lover, you're gonna you're gonna fall in love with the cheeses that we have. Oh, that's me. That's me. I like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> if you love a burger, then you're gonna have the best burger in town. Or if you want something for on the bakery or your coffee or your sandwich. Yeah, we also want want the Golden Hog to be very convenient. I mean, there's two two strengths that we offer or or that we or competitive advantage that we say to, to our customers. One is the convenience, right? That you can go there. There's no menu. In, in other words, you can really have many alternative to eat, right? Whether you are on a diet or you want to eat a burger or you want to have cheeses or have a glass of wine. And the other thing is the speed, the time it takes, because you really literally drive through the Golden Hog, get there and serve from the buffet or order the sandwich have your lunch and then or dinner and then in 15 or 20 minutes you're out and and again it's very high quality food in a very fast self service environment so it's it's really it's really empowering the customer to decide what they want instead of a preset menu of a restaurant that you know that you have to go and only eat what what is available in the menu and one last thing that we like at the golden hog is the environment we want to have a community feel and you know, we have those communal tables and just neighbors gather and end up having a lunch together, even if they didn't even plan it. And it's really a very family-friendly atmosphere also. Yeah. You also took this opportunity to do some renovations, right? I think the last time I was there, you mentioned. Yes. Well, we're always renovating. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, it's a, it's a pretty old, uh, we're located in a very old um, shopping center here in Key Biscayne. We are a small business, so we, we everything that we do, and it's our, you know, source of living, right? Um, but everything that we do and remodel there comes from the business cash flow. So, and there's a lot of things that has to be upgraded uh, over the last 10 years. We have been doing it little by little. Right now, we we are on a major renovation to make the Golden Hog experience to become to the level of the Kiwi Scanner, Kiwi Scan customers that we have. Okay, so I understand you have a juice bar there as well? This is, this yeah. is yes, this is one of the beautiful things of the Golden Hog is that it actually evolves with time and with trends, you know? Uh, I mean, initially when we purchased a Golden Hog, it was a produce, basically mostly sell produce. Um, and we still sell produce, and produce is a very important department for the store. But we have added many other things. It, and that's one of the, the juice bar is one of them. We still have a juice bar. It's been relatively successful. I think people still don't understand. We probably need to do a better job communicating the benefits of the juice bar we have. But imagine that you can go to a juice bar where you have all the fresh produce that arrive in the morning and you can make the juice the way you want. I mean, you don't even have to make it. There's somebody to make it the way you want it, right? Um, and eat healthy and have a healthy breakfast. So 
So these are things we can do at the Golden Hog because we have the capability of having all this supply chain with fresh produce and products that arrive every morning, you know, and be convenient for you so you don't have to 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 have it at home or or or, or have to prepare it yourself. I can work out in the morning, I can go have breakfast at, at the Golden Hog, and then I can have a juice exactly. from the juice bar from the from the produce that comes in in the morning. Correct. Super, super fresh, super light. Exactly. So we have the market component. We got the the juice bar. I know you have a deli, the cheeses. Can you tell me a little bit more about the bakery? Uh, That's sure. Mariana's expertise. Yeah, sure. I love. <laughs> I used to to bake uh, sweets at home, so I love that uh, section of our store. And we have so many products and treats there. People love our granola and our alfajores and our brownies and our fruit tarts. And then you can have all the pastries, pequeños, empanadas, you know, everything is there for you. So the bakery is actually where most of our neighbors actually meet because, again, you can have your fresh juice at the juice bar, but then the bakery offers more traditional breakfast-style items. So you can get your coffee, you can get croissants, you can get other things, and sit in our tables and chat with a friend while enjoying a very good coffee or, or a pastry. And maybe I should go more often. Maybe I can meet more neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I know. I also know that there is a component where the food is already made, right? Like a hot, how would you yeah. call that station area? That's very convenient. It's a hot yes. bar or a... That's a the buffet. The buffet. It's a buffet. It's a buffet because you also have the salads. So okay. it has two sections. It has a salad bar, which is a cold section. It's, it's a self-service salad bar. And then it has the hot bar, which is the buffet. Every day we serve there a poultry, beef, or and fish. And then there is another three sides. So the idea is that you can pick between these three or four proteins we have and add two sizes to your dish. And, and we sell everything by weight. So you really decide how much you want to eat and how much also you you know, you want to pay because uh, ultimately it's weighted. I mean, wh- mm-hmm. at the end of the day, what you're paying is for how much. And then the what, what, is we, what we really want to offer there is like a restaurant quality food, mm-hmm. you know, very excellent quality. Without, you're gonna without, have. without being too sophisticated. We want to make yeah. it everyday quality prep food for you with flavors that reminds you what you used to eat at home. Do you understand so yeah. it's, it's very homey. Yeah. yeah, well, sometimes in other buffet styles, there's food that is, I don't know, lower quality, in my mm-hmm. opinion. And then here we want to offer a really good meal. All the ingredients we use at the Golden Hog, and this is across the board in all the departments, are very high quality products. I mean, we receive fish every day, we receive uh, meat every day, produce and that's what we use in the kitchen and, mm-hmm. and the other departments. I it mean, is made from scratch. It's not like in other places they just open correct. a soup and put it there. We make our soups. We make the food from scratch every day. Yeah, we have a team, a fantastic team, I have to tell you. Many cooks that arrive early at the Golden Hog and they start prepping everything to ensure the quality and the freshness of the product we sell. Mm. The Golden Hog experience expands outside of the location in the plaza, right? That's correct. And literally, that was the reason I convinced Mariana to move to Kiwi's game because, I mean, managing one place remotely was good and was difficult. Uh, Managing two was going to be even harder. So, yes, we opened a, a second location in Key Colony. Key Colony, as you know, is the second, is the largest condominium in Key Biscayne. And in 2015, 2014, there was an opportunity they offer us to open a, a convenience store inside the Key Colony condominium. At the time, I and actually still believe it was a great business move for us because the business, I mean, was growing and we wanted to learn how to manage multiple locations without putting at risk what we have done so far. Mm-hmm. So Key Colony was not only a great opportunity to attend a niche community itself, but also for us as an organization to learn 
okay, how do we, if we want to continue, keep growing and open more stores, how, what are those processes that we have to have in place and how are we going to organize ourselves to be able to manage multiple locations and be successful doing it, you know? So the Key Colony location, it's like a mini version of the market. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's like a little grocery with a little bit of produce, a little bit of... It has actually household. everything that we have at the Golden Hog, but reduced, exactly. right? And, and that's the idea. You have the convenience at mm -hmm. your Door doorsteps, mm -hmm. right? To get a sandwich, to have the coffee, to get a croissant, to get a, a soup, even the and buffet. The buffet, yeah, and the salad bar, yeah. Everything is there in a micro... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's actually, you know, uh, I think for Key Colony, it's a fantastic yeah, service and, and benefit for the Key Colony residents. Yeah, I think it looks very nice. And I've been there several times for like meetings, stuff like that. It's very, very cozy. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. How do you find it uh, managing that little space within a condominium? Well, I have to say that the Key Colony HOA and the Key Colony community has been very supportive. They really, I think they really value what we add to the community. They understand that having a market like us, like the Golden Hog down here, really adds value to their property, right? And makes living in Key, in Key Colony, it's almost a resort style because you really don't have to take your car to go to, to the supermarket. Not only that, we in two years after we opened the convenience store here, the HOA gave us the opportunity to operate the bar at the ocean pool, which is called the sandbar. So we not only have the Key Colony store, which is the Golden Hog, but also we operate the sandbar. And between both, we can offer the residents of Key Colony a resort-style living. Were you part of the renovation of the area? No, well, that was only for the Golden Hog. The Golden Hog, we did all the renovation yes. for the store. Uh, the sandbar was done by the HOA and the Key Colony uh, community. Awesome. Did you let them know that if you were be happy to take it over, if they made some changes to be able to offer a much better, pleasant experience, or was the redevelopment part of the plan already? The redevelopment was part of the plan for the sandbar. They they had a plan to rebuild the gazebo there. And they wanted to have a, an operator who can make that place successful. And there was a, a bidding con contest, and, and we actually win that, that bid. So tell me a little bit about the team. I'm sure all this beautiful experience that you provide depends on, a, on an interesting team. Definitely. Over the last 10 years, we have been able to really consolidate a, a group of people that are unbelievable people. If we wouldn't have them, the story would be completely different. I think uh, the success of the Golden Hog and what makes a Golden Hog strong is, is, is a team we have. That team has evolved over time. We're bringing more talent to incorporate to the, to the business. But the beauty is that right nowadays, all the customers feel familiar with our team. You know, they, they know their names, our managers knows the customer pretty well. I mean, we have the, the case of Gabriel here in Key Colony, which is almost part of the community. Everybody knows him, and, and he's a phenomenal guy. We have Harold, Fausto, Oscar at the Golden Hog, which are always paying attention to make sure that the customer has the best experience, and, and they are also pretty popular at the Golden Hog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Do you guys have, like... Uh meetings and strategic planning sessions <laughs> in the food business unfortunately especially at the golden hog is it's hard to have everybody at the same time together hmm. two years ago we were able to hire our hr manager we have a, an actual hr manager working for us and she has been phenomenal organizing strategic meetings for us on a weekly basis we meet every week once a week as a team we discuss the things that happen over the week and also we plan for the things that we're going to do for the season to get ready for the seasons. Mariana, for, for example, she's also a, a phenomenal value added for the Golden Hog because she, she's really the purchasing person. I mean, she, she buys. 
When you go to the Golden Hog and you see the amazing products we have, that's Mariana behind. I mean, she's been selecting and negotiating with suppliers and making sure that we have the supplies and the inventory that, that the customers want. Yeah, I, I have to say that I, I love what I do. I really do. I used to be a buyer back home for a, the largest department store in Venezuela. And then I studied something different. And then now I'm back to buying. And having that back experience back home where I used to travel to different countries, especially in Latin America, to do the buying and all of that definitely gave me the ground knowledge to take this job. I'm happy to say that I travel within the United States for food shows every year, three to four shows. This year, of course, that has not been happening, but I still go to virtual shows, interestingly enough. And it's, it's an amazing world out there. It's so many things. It's really a hard time to be able to pick. I want to have a second story in the store so that I can bring all the, More inventory. All the <laughs> products that I find out there, which are fascinating. But, you know, of course, you have to choose and, and bring the best. That's actually an interesting point. How do you, how do you test a new product? How do you do well, that? I go to these shows where literally I taste them myself. I, mm. You know, you have to know the product and I taste it. You see all the properties it has and you have to take into consideration. Food is also trends. So you have to take into to consideration what customers are looking for. If it is low sugar or high fiber or lactose keto free. or lactose free, you have to keep... You have to be on top of all, all these trends. It really changes, you know. I, I used to think, because when I buy before, it was for clothing. And clothing is fashion, and it changes every time. I was surprised to find that food behaves the same way. You just have to keep reinventing your shelves and bring what people are looking for, because it's food is fashion. So when you find something you like and you want to give it a try in the market, is that, is that something that you do often or are you always trying different things? Or I, I always have new products at the store almost every day, but I would say every week I incorporate three to four new items in the store. It's, it's a very dynamic environment and, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, this is what makes a golden hog and, and our job to enjoy every day. Try new mm-hmm. things almost by every day. I want to say that that is also a competitive advantage that we offer because we are a small store, but we are able to do fast changes versus a large corporation, like a large supermarket chain. It takes so many steps to introduce a new product in the market. Here, I can say if I find a product that I like, I can have it the next day at the store available for the customers. And I, I think that is a pretty amazing thing we can do. So great. It's awesome that, that you've been able to find this way to offer so many things in such a awesome, beautiful space and have such a welcoming environment. So I want to thank you for joining us today and for sharing your story with us. Thank, thank you, you very much, Alejandro. We appreciate it. It has been a pleasure for us.